TGV, TGV. Hugo, what are you doing? Put my camera away, please, it's expensive. I'm filming you, documentary stuff, you know, like uh, Werner Herzog. Yeah, but, yeah, but Werner doesn't have his claws in the frame. <laughs> Come on now, chap, let's make another video. No, look, I, I haven't got time. I've, I've, got a, I've got this three days of editing and hard work to do on this. But darling, the last video did so well. Uh, well, you mean the, the, the watch brand rant video? Yes, old boy, but you said you'd do a part two, and the plebs adore me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Hugo, I have a real watch review to do. Oh, don't be such a beastly bore. Look, if you, if you promise to put my camera away and stop annoying me, I'll think about it, okay? Oh, huzzah and hurrah! No, wait, no, Hugo, oh my god. Oh, Hugo, what have you done? Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, an unofficial part two to the last video. I'll, I'll leave a link up there if you missed it. I did a top 10 of things that watch brands really need to stop doing. Today, I'm flipping the script a little bit and looking at 10 things watch enthusiasts need to stop doing. I'm, cer I'm certainly one of them, uh, putting on NATO on everything. Well, actually, I've, I've scaled that back, uh, I have to admit, but anyway. Um, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. Yeah, it's the Explorer, my favorite watch of all time. It's on the uh, second generation of Valor Strap, which I designed for Wrist Candy Watch Club. I'll leave a link. It's a marriage made in heaven. I actually kind of intended it when I designed this strap uh, for the Submariner and the Explorer. So yeah, the monochromatic scheme. Without further ado, Let's crack on, shall we? Number 10. Like me, straight out of the pen. Dismissing watches before you even tried them. Uh, I see comments a lot from watch enthusiasts, especially on reviews, uh, saying, oh, not really my cup of tea, blah, blah, blah. But, but then, do you really know? Uh, yeah, there are certain designs, certain styles that's definitely not going to be your thing. But if the Explorer has taught me anything, and the Navi Time as well, two watches that I, I regret not owning and getting into earlier. I always kind of ignored the Explorer. I thought it was boring. I thought it was rather uninspired. And then I borrowed one. My whole perception changed. Um, experience is the greatest uh, educator in life. Number nine. Fish pairs superbly with white wine. Okay, number nine is this persistent hatred for quartz. I still don't get it. Uh, I understand there is something, uh, a deeper connection to mechanical watches that, that some say there's a soul to it. I certainly agree, you know, they're ticking away. It's, I've described it as a kind of biomechanical relationship, especially with automatic movements. There's a magic there, there's a special connection. It depends on your movement to, to, to power it. With the daily winding of a, of a hand wound, uh, piece, there's an intimate connection there. I totally get it, and I'm with you. There's a tradition there that the literal mechanical link to the early days of, of clock and watchmaking, obviously, right? Uh, but quartz is a natural progression of horology. It's part of the story. To ignore it, I think, is a mistake. And I think, actually, every collection should have a quartz. And if you've never experienced the quartz, you know, give it a chance. There's very different ways quartz has been beautifully utilized. I think of my brightening chronospace that I forever will regret selling. Using just one crown to manipulate all these functions, the thermocompensated high-end quartz, are very impressive. It's clever, it was, it was fun, it felt different. It was a, a, new, a, a new take on it. And then, of course, you have the affordable G-Shocks, which are very built for task, historic, uh, used by militaries. A wonderful way of, of using that technology. I think everybody should give it a go. There is a place for a quartz watch in every collection. Actually, the Cartier tank is another example. My wife has a quartz uh, tank and there's no second hand, so you forget it's quartz. 
She doesn't wear the dress watch often. I'm not a big dress watch guy. It's a unisex model. So uh, grab and go to, to, to match an outfit. If you don't want to spend a lot of money on a mechanical dress watch that you're not going to wear that much, again, there's another good example of where quartz is useful. Uh, also, it's a great reference point for the rest of your collection, keeping track of the accuracy, etc. Nowadays, we have full ABC capabilities, you know, amazing complications. And not to mention the high-end stuff as well, like FP Jean, uh, what Grand Seiko are doing, etc., etc. Number eight, a gentleman is never late for a date. Hating on an entire brand because you had one bad experience. Now, let me give you an example. We've all had QC issues with Seiko. It just happens. It's obviously going to happen. Well, the, there's going to be more chance of it at the entry level because corners are cut. There isn't so much of a higher standard of QC. Um, so it happens. No watch brand is infallible to this. I've had a brand new Breitling out of the factory. It was losing a ridiculous amount of, uh, of time. I had to send it back. Uh, it wasn't within the cost it was promised to be. So nobody's invincible. These are complex little mechanical machines. Even digital watches, it can happen to them. We all work hard for our money and we all expect perfection for our money, but sometimes it's not guaranteed. What I think is re really mad, and I think it's a shame because you're gonna miss out, is just to, I've seen people say, oh, I'm never buying a Seiko again. I bought a Seiko, kept terrible time, misaligned chapter ring or whatever, absolutely rubbish, never buying one again. Well, you know, you can't judge an entire brand with such a rich legacy on the mishap of one watch. If you bought it from a reputable source, from a great authorized dealer that you trust, they're gonna replace it. So don't worry about it, it happens. I, I, you know, I know it's disheartening, I know it's frustrating, uh, but it happens. Just don't, don't be too hard on a brand. I've seen even, it happens to the best of them. I've seen misaligned rehorts on Rolexes. So yeah, it happens to them all. Number seven. I'm from the Jurassic Coast in Devon. Number seven, the armchair watch designer. Now, every time I review a watch, especially with micro brands, people get overly critical and then they start saying, well, oh, for that kind of money, for $400, I could buy uh, such and such a Citizen or such and such an Orient or a Seiko, blah, blah, blah. Of course you can. Those companies are huge, multinational. <laughs> they have the infrastructure, the factories, the materials, the know-how, the investment. If we look at Seiko, all the proprietary technology, of course they're gonna make something that's far more competitive than an independent brand that's literally one person in some cases, a micro brand. I think we need to give them a little bit more respect. Guys, whenever a, a watch, no matter the level, entry level, super high end, you got to think about what went into it, the designing, the research and development, the testing, the materials, the wages in, in, for the manufacturing, the manufacturing facilities, machinery, the rent, the electricity, the gas, the, the, the canteen if they're a big factory, the, um, the, the list is en endless, not to mention the maintenance, the, um, the, the QC, the testing, the regulation if it is regulated. Uh, the, the, then you got the promotion, the, you got legal fees, taxes. Where do I, what else? The list is endless. Promotion, advertising, distribution, transport costs, all of these things mount up and God forbid they make a profit as well. I've toured about um, six or seven factories now, everyone from TAG, Oris, Bouvet, JLC, um, who else, uh, um, Fortis, um, many, many brands, right? When you see a watch being manufactured from start to finish, then you really appreciate how much hard work went into it. And what I, I find especially unkind on the micro brands is that's often somebody's passion, their dream. They're, they're mortgaging their house and investing hundreds of thousands of dollars even to make just a small batch of watches. It's an, a massive undertaking. It's very easy to critique, but it's another thing to make something out of nothing, and that deserves respect. Number six, I've got posh wrists like chopsticks. Okay, number six, I see this all the time. Entry-level watches are a waste of money. This is hogwash, pure, unadulterated <laughs> hogwash. Uh, everybody has to start somewhere. Not everybody wants to spend 
hundreds of thousands or thousands or, or even a hundred dollars on a watch. Some people just want a, a, a ten dollar Casio. That's absolutely fine to dismiss them, to say that they're not in the community or, or, or that they're or even worse, to talk badly or down to them. I think it's, it's just such bad form. A real enthusiast is open and appreciative of everything at all levels. If somebody dismisses a watch just because of its price or its low price, uh, and because it's affordable, they're not really into watches. Number five, let's take the Rolls Royce for a drive. This obsession with value and value retention. Yes, it's great when a watch holds its value, uh, you resell it, you get your money back, that's great, you know. But it's not everything. Every time I, I review a watch, I'm going to discuss its value because it's an aspect of the watch. It's not everything. To define a watch solely on its value and to dismiss anything because it doesn't appreciate in value is a massive mistake. You're going to miss out on some wonderful watches. You're not going to have as much fun. That kind of thinking goes into buying for investment. If you want to buy just to make money, you're not buying it for the love of the watches, for the design, for the passion, for the feeling it gives, because you can't put a price on enjoyment. Look, you can buy for whatever reason. I'm, I'm just saying, this is my opinion. I think a real enthusiast, they're enthusiastic about, you know, not just the monetary number attributed to something, okay? Because there are things that are inquantifiable. You, you can't put a price on pleasure or history or all these things, the, the emotion that a watch gives. There's a flip side to this. There are some watches or watch brands, I should say, that um, really depreciate in value, don't have great value retention, but you can get a great deal. And that's the, the big plus side of this. For example, Gerard Perregaard, I've talked about them many, many times, hugely underrated uh, hor horology brand, still innovating to this day with the constant escapement, which I think was 2005? No, no, sorry, 2009, probably got that wrong, do correct me. But yeah, an amazing achievement. Uh, and so they're still capable of this high-level hor horology micro-engineering that's very impressive, right? But you can pick them up. And not not the not, not the constant escapement, but you can pick up vintage ones from that brand for as little as 500 bucks. I think it's important not to get too obsessed with value. Money isn't everything. Number four, I do adore hunting wild boar. When people call themselves aficionados, connoisseurs, uh, experts, this kind of thing, I've never called myself any of that. Uh, in fact, I find I get quite embarrassed when people do. I'm constantly learning. We all have to learn. But I think to call yourself that, where's where's the humbleness? You know, these are titles that are given to somebody by other people. So that guy, that's an expert. It's it's arrogance. You know, come on, let's let's have, let's try and have some decorum of of, of civility, shall we? Number three. Bring me some Fortnum's scones and tea. Mmm, scrumptious. Uh, number three, and I see this constantly on YouTube, on, on, on Instagram, and it's like saying, oh, well, I'm into horology, and then, the, and then it's just like every single picture's a watch. Yes, watches are a part of horology, but you're just into watches. And then, you know, they, they think horology, oh, just because... I have all these expensive watches, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm more into horology than somebody with less expensive. No. Horology is the study of time, it's the keeping of time. It runs parallel to human civilization. I've said this many, many, many times. If you're truly into horology, right, you will be discussing Kendall's pocket watches that Captain Cook took on his uh, voyages. You'll be discussing the art of Rite of Derby and how integral it was to the, the golden age of, of watchmaking. You'll be looking at the innovations of Tompion, Mudge, uh, John Arnold, everything from Galileo and his pendulum to Christian uh, Huygens and his innovations. You know, horology is far bigger. It's not just watches. So I think people need to, I think people get kind of pretentious with it. You've got to keep it, let's keep it real. You know what I mean? Let's, let's just keep it real. Part of the problem here is that the, the brands have kind of hijacked that word, you know, especially with horology, right? 
and people equate horology with the value of something. So I've seen people say, that Casio, that's not horology. Yes, it is. It, it keeps time, right? That's, that's horology, right? So no, no, it's not horology because it's not, it's just cheap. No, no. Horology does not equate to, to, to the value of anything. It's not, not related whatsoever. The marketing has brainwashed them. The luxury marketing has utterly, you know, confused them. I, I actually have more respect for somebody with a sake of five and a real passion for history and horology of all levels than somebody that has 10 Richard Millets and you know they're, they're, they're dismissive and, and snobby towards anything that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Number two, I want a penthouse on Park Avenue. Arguing over watches. I see enthusiasts engaging all the time and I, I love the passion. I love the fact that people care, but it, it crosses a line when people get personal, they get nasty, becomes negative, and it just, it devolves into this kind of like hatred. And I, I just don't get it. Unfortunately, we do live in a bit of a kind of man baby culture, especially with the online world of constant complaining and negativity. And, and because people mistakenly think they're anonymous, you know, hiding behind their nameless accounts and blah, 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 blah. They think it's acceptable to say things they would never have the guts to say to your face. and. Things escalate so quickly. Guys, it's not that serious. They're just watches. Enjoy them. Life is too short to argue with people you don't know, <laughs> never, most likely never will meet. And then, what's the point? You proved your point. And so what? We should help each other. We should try and educate each other. We should try and support each other, be positive, inspire, spread this love because otherwise it's going to remain a niche. As we discussed in the previous video, the brands aren't doing a good job, so it's up to us. If the brands can't, you know, get on board and inspire new generations into appreciating watches and yes, horology, then um, it's up to us. As old Winnie used to say, and I've said this before, it's one of my favorite quotes, you will never get to your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. Number one, I don't hang with just anyone. Well, TGV is an exception, bit of a plonker. Everybody has different tastes. Something amazing to you might be absolute trash to somebody else. It's important not to say that, obviously. It's just appreciate the differences. If we were all the same, it'd be so boring. Unfortunately, not everybody has the decency and, and, and respect to, to follow through with that and, and to actually treat people with respect. But guys, remember this. If you come across somebody that is unpleasant, that is rude, don't worry about it. It's their issue. They're the ones, perhaps they're unhappy in their life. They don't have the love and support that you do. You know, I've, I've certainly learned so much being online. The downside is you're going to get criticism. You put anything out there, you're going to get criticism. I've learnt a great deal of tenacity through much bigger adversities than, than, than you know, some harsh words on, on, the, on the internet, you know. But not everybody has a thick skin. And never to lower yourself to their level. Because it, it's just self-hatred projected outwards. It's not really anything to do with you, you know. It's their unhappiness, it's their insecurities. So just enjoy what you have, what we share. And that's the irony is that a lot of the bickering I see between watch enthusiasts, we love the same thing. You know, I've said this time and time again. And something I see all the time is when they say, oh, well, it's just constructive criticism. No, no. There's a big difference between saying, well, I think the loom could have been a little bit different at the 12 o'clock, you know, for better orientation than saying that the loom is effing this or this or, or, you know, and then taking it personally like it's a lump of crap and blah, 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 and all this stuff. That's destructive criticism, destructive criticism. So, yeah, just, guys, just relax. Take it easy, enjoy it, share it. Please do share your pet peeves about watch enthusiasts in the comments below. And um, 
what you do to, to kind of help or inspire or, or change that perception. Advice as well. I'd love to hear um, things that you've done or, or inspirational kind of um, anecdotes or little, little stories that inspire as well. I do appreciate that, those comments as well. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. How much more of this blasted thing have I got to do? Okay, <clears throat> all right, Hugo, cut. <clears throat> Now before I go guys, I just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive, onwards and upwards.